Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, I thank you for making the effort of being with us today through this uh, virtual uh, vehicle. I mean, we're facing a, a difficult time, but I'm pretty sure that uh, everything will end up well and we're going to go back to our normal life. Uh, I hope you're all safe. As I just said, thank you, Josh, for helping us with this. I'm here also with the, the program assistant, maybe the program assistant of the, of the last, last uh, program, which is Emily Sote, uh, and um, she will then share in eventually her email so that you can also contact her for any additional questions. I don't see my, my PowerPoint just now. So if you want to click to the next slide using that arrow feature on the left-hand vertical toolbar, you'll be able to start. No, I, I see here an Acrobat DC country report. So this, this, are, this is my, my, should I download free scan app? No, wait a minute. Okay, the one thing, the, the, the one I see now, Josh, is again the cover page. Up next, Latin American Hemispheric Studies. I don't see the, the, the PowerPoint. So I just changed myself back to the presenter and you should. Yeah, yeah please, please help me with that so I can move on. Okay, so we, uh, this is, as I said, the, the Latin American Hemispheric Studies program. And I'm the program director, and Emily Sauter is the program assistant. Next slide. Uh, what I will do now as uh, briefly, so we have time for questions and answers, is introduce the, the program, uh, the curriculum, a brief overview. Uh, I will uh, also share with you uh, the names and, and specialties of some of our faculty. I will talk about employment and internships and study abroad, uh, abroad options. Next slide. Uh, the curriculum uh, uh, is uh, the core credit, or it is a 40 credit program, as you know. Uh, we have 12 credit core curriculum. That includes a cornerstone course, which is a three credit hours course, uh, which will give you a, an interdisciplinary foundation for your program. And then the core field. The core field uh, comprises nine credits, that is three courses. And you have to take one course from three different disciplines, which are listed here, anthropology, economics and political economy, political science, international affairs, geography, history, and Spanish literature. Uh, next slide. Then you also have the specialized field, and you have to choose two specialized fields in 12th grade. That is basically two courses for each field. And again, the options are anthropology, art, history, literature, and culture, economic development, geography, global public health, history, international business, migration, political science, and security. Next slide. Uh, the next component is the elective. You have to take nine credits in the elective credit, that is three courses, uh, from any of the previously mentioned fields. But in addition, you can also may choose to take professional skill courses, including, for example, uh, for, for students, the EAP, which is English for Academic Purpose. And also, you need to take the language courses up to six credits. You could. A requirement is a research method, three credits, and there are a number of options as uh, which one you can take depending on what your main interest is. 
Next slide. Next slide. Uh, the custom is a culminating experience. It's a signature uh, program, a signature course of our program, and it is a full credit hour course. The capstone is divided into two, a, a start in two semesters. It's divided into two parts, two credit courses. One in the fall of your second year, uh, and then the other one in the spring of your second year, that is just when you are about to, to graduate. This is a four credit hour course. It's a year long to be taken as it says uh, in, in the second year. What, are the cap what is a capstone? The capstone is an, a team-based in-field research uh, which is funded on a competitive basis. That means that once you pick a topic, once you develop a project, once you find a client, once you sign the terms of reference, the, ter the terms of reference. Once you finish this process, you, in the spring, you travel to the country where you want to do the research, and the school provides you with, you and your team, with, uh, with financing for that trip. Normally, that trip takes place in the spring. Unfortunately, in this case, we have to cancel. And you have to apply for, for funding, and funding is given on a competitive basis, but we have been very successful so far, and all our teams were able to uh, uh, get the funding for their for their in uh, in country field research. Uh, however, this is not a requirement; it is an option. It is an option, though, that uh, the majority of uh, so far all of our teams have uh, used. Some of the clients that uh, our teams have worked for in these uh, capstone courses, which are, you know, like a pro bono research, include Asylum Access, the Ministry of Tourism and Civil Aviation of Belize, the Pan American Development Foundation, the Wilson Center, the Crisis Group, the Organization of uh, Inter-American, Organization of American State, Organization de Estados Americanos, also in the past, Inter-American Development Bank. Next uh, slide. Uh, some of the examples are listed here, the most recent ones, 2018-2019 uh, and the 2019-2020. Uh, a roadmap to stand education in Buenos Aires, Enhancing community-based tourism in Belize, narco blocks, an increasingly common phenomenon in Mexico, Venezuelan migration to Colombia and Trinidad and Tobago, a comparative analysis, assessing economic integration in Mexico, challenges for asylum seekers and for refugees in the Mexican labor market, and fighting against femicide in Latin America, challenges of implementing the Belen do Pará Convention. These are the five most recent custom projects. Next slide. Of course, you have a thesis option. This, uh, that implies six credits in addition to the capstone Keep in mind, the thesis option doesn't replace a capstone. So you have a, a, to take, in this case, the 6, 9, 80, 98, and 99 courses, three credits each, uh, the thesis research, semester one and semester two. There is also an independent research option, which is uh, only three credits. So if you're interested, you should consult with me and also with the program advisor, uh, Patrick Murphy. Next slide. Uh, the language requirement, this is something many students ask. Uh, the language proficiency implies uh, that when 
you complete the, the uh, MA in Latin American and hemispheric studies, you have a demonstrated oral and reading proficiency in Spanish or Portuguese. The test dates uh, are announced, usually are in November and April, that is at the end of the fall and at the end of the spring season. You have free language tutoring available through GW, and uh, you also have Spanish conversation hours uh, through the LATAM, which is the, the, the association of uh, Latin, uh, the students of the Latin American uh, program, Latin American studies program. And we've been very successful in the past. We done all our students have been able to pass uh, to pass the test without. Uh, major difficulty. So this is should not be seen as a you know something scary as a barrier uh, or, or, or something you know like an obstacle uh, to you progressing towards a graduation. Next slide. Some of our faculty. Well I'm here, I'm the, the program director. Uh, Paula Alonso is a professor of history. She teaches Latin American history. She's from Argentina. We have also Alec Dent. Uh, he teaches in the Department of Anthropology. He's an anthropologist, teaching basically rural urban relations. We have Ambassador Lino Gutierrez, a former ambassador, US ambassador to Argentina. His courses are dealing with Central America, Cuba, and the Caribbean, and diplomacy. We have Professor Stephen Kaplan, uh, who teaches political economy of Latin America. Professor Cynthia McClintock, she teaches Latin American politics. The country in which she specializes is uh, Peru. We have Marie Price uh, of the Department of Geography. She teaches political, cultural, and environmental geography, migration, and development. We have Ambassador Arturo Sarucan, former ambassador of uh, Mexico, the United States. He teaches contemporary U.S.-Mexican Mexico relations. Arturo Sotomayor. Uh, he teaches. Uh, he's uh, uh, with the SBS, the Security Program, uh, the director, and he teaches transnational security. And Erica Wortman. She teaches media and culture, indigenous media, visual heritage, and, and archiving, national ethnicity, and. Her uh, country of concentration is Mexico. Next slide. And we have also adjunct professors that are distinguished, uh, distinguished practitioners that are in the Washington area. I just want to mention uh, Paulo Sotero, who is the director of the Brazil program at the Wilson Center, Jason, Jason Marksack, the director of the Latin American Center of the Atlantic Council, Eric Jacobstein, who is Senior Policy Advisor of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, and Carla Maenza, who is a PhD that teaches gender and violence in, in Latin America. Next, next uh, slide. Uh, employment opportunity. Uh, our our uh, alumni have been quite successful. They work in some of the following organizations, Counterpart International, DAI Global, Human Rights Watch, Inter-American Development Bank, IREC, Common Sol uh, Community Solution Program, Partners of the Americas, the World Bank, United Nations, the U.S. Department of State. Next slide. Our program is not only very interdisciplinary, but you can see that as well in where our graduates end up working. As you can see in this graphic, in this, you, you have a perfect 25, 25, 25 percent uh, division. 25 percent go to nonprofit, conflict resolution, human rights, uh, 25 percent to the private sector, private consulting, and government contracting. Public, 25% uh, to private law, and 25% to public multilateral organization. Next slide. 
We also have a study abroad option. Uh, one of uh, the most popular one is the University of Torcuato de Tela in Buenos Aires, but we also have other programs with the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Rio de Janeiro uh, and with the Colegio de Mexico. There are additional opportunities with uh, non-partners, and there are also short-term courses led by GW uh, faculty. We were planning one in Mexico, unfortunately, uh, for the summer. Unfortunately, we had to cancel because of the COVID-19 crisis. Next slide. The next slide is it. Questions, preguntas, gestión yo, preguntas. Please write your your question in, in in the in the chat. So I can. Uh, while we're waiting for questions to roll in, uh, maybe you or Emily uh, could write a. Do you have a good contact that if students have questions after today, they can contact you with? Yeah, uh, uh, Emily will write her email address that you can uh, write to her and uh, she will answer quickly and also, you know, eventually uh, uh, I can answer the questions as well. Uh, in addition, I should, I should mention, good question, Ari, I should mention that uh, uh, on Friday from 7.15 to 8.15 p.m., we're going to have a faculty panel. We're going to have three faculty members Cynthia McClintock, Paula Alonso, and uh, Marie Price participate in a question and answer session with students, admitted students. Uh, and also um, Stephen Kaplan will participate with a video, short video. He's not going to be able to, to join us in the online, in the online session uh, on Thursday. You will be getting the, the, the link, a uh, WebEx link to access. Uh, the question was, how many credits do we recommend per semester? Okay. Uh, you, you need 40, you need to complete 40 credits. So if you take nine per semester, you end up having 36. So it is important for you to see which of the semesters could be a better choice for you to take an extra an extra course, or it could be summer. Uh, it depends. You have to adjust to your, you know, to your reason. Uh, you know, the, the the amount of time you have available, the courses that are being offered. The good thing here is always keep in mind that the capstone is a four credit hour course. So the capstone, you should calculate the capstone on top of the 36. So think about 36 plus capstone, and the capstone closes the four. Yeah. Any other question? I if as I wait for for, for answer for questions, excuse me, I would just answer we have a little time left. Uh, I wanted to let you know what are the courses that some of the courses we're going to be teaching this fall. Uh, we are going to be teaching, you know, the standard cornerstone course, which, as I said, is an interdisciplinary foundation of, of our program. We are going to be teaching a course on the politics uh, of Latin America, uh, government and politics. And we are going to be teaching political economy of Latin America. We are going to be teaching a, a standard geography of Latin America course, and we are going to be, we have three distinguished adjunct professors that will be teaching this fall semester. Well, as I mentioned them quickly before, Eric Jacobstein will be teaching a course on the security in the America. The course uh, uh, has to do with this big uh, challenge that we have. Uh, you know, the, uh, the issue of security, which is not only a military issue, but it's also a human issue. 
uh, Eric uh, Jacobstein, Professor Jacobstein is a senior foreign policy advisor of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, senior policy, the senior Latin American advisor as well at the same committee, and he served before as the coordinator or director of the a caucus on narcotic control in the Senate. So it's a person that has been in Congress, in the, working in, in the Hill for many years, and knows this issue, uh, is an expert on the issue, and, and knows as well you know, all the initiatives and all the negotiations that have been developed uh, within the government, within, between Congress and the executive and, and the White House, and also in relation with other countries. Uh, we also have a course by Paulo Sotero. As I say, Paulo Sotero is probably the best, uh, the best person to teach uh, Brazil here in DC. He's going to be teaching a course on Brazil in the global context. Uh, he is the director of the Brazil Studies Program at the Wilson Center. We, we're going to have uh, Lisa Vicini, who is the director of the Energy Program at the Inter-American Dialogue teaching a course on climate change in Latin America. In addition to the standard courses, these are you know, practitioners that will be teaching these specific courses. In the spring, and this is to be confirmed, we're going to have a course on economic and social development, in which uh, we have to confirm, but this is what we're working on. Uh, Professor Otaviano Canuto, former vice president of the World Bank for Latin America, and uh, we're going to have a course on China and Latin America uh, is going to be taught by Dr. Margaret Myers, who is the top expert of the China Latin America program at the Wilson Center. So, and we're going to have, uh, we have plan, we're planning on the course on the issue of migration and human rights, or human rights, international human rights, and inter, the international framework and the inter American framework, uh, human rights framework or systems. And, and especially with an emphasis on the issue of migration, Ambassador Francisco Villagran, who is the former ambassador of uh, Guatemala to the United States and a very high level diplomat at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Guatemala, retired ambassador, uh, has taught this course before and we're looking forward to his uh, teaching again this spring. The, spring. the spring schedule of classes is still to be confirmed. The fall schedule of class is already set and is there. Uh, Professor uh, Carla Maenza will teach a course on uh, women and, and violence against women in Latin America. She will be teaching in, in the this summer. And again, that is, she's also, uh, we are also preparing uh, the, the, the spring schedule of classes and in, including that same course, the expanded course in the spring semester. So I think this is. This is a full plate of uh, very, very useful courses uh, in addition to the standard courses from our discipline. What tips do you have for first year students starting the program? Any readings that are important before matriculating? Oh, yes. Uh, number one, be in touch. Be in touch uh, with Emily, be in touch with me. That's the, you know, the tip of the tip. You know, we're here to answer any question. We're here to help you. We're here to guide you. Even if you don't have your comprehensive, uh, you, you still don't, don't have your comprehensive plan, academic plan, nonetheless, we, we can still, you know, uh, talk about it. Uh, if I were to recommend you a book, depending on how, what's your background, in Latin America. Some of you have uh, taken many courses already, or a few courses already, other fewer, but I think a good, good book is Modern Latin America, which is a course, a, a book by published edition 2019, uh, published by, by uh, Oxford University Press, is uh, by um, Professor Green and Professor Skidmore. And, and green, uh, on the one hand, uh, Tom uh, Alan, uh, and Smith. I mean, Skidmore, Smith, and Green. And the other one is by by Green, uh, which is called 
modern uh, challenges to Latin American uh, to Latin America. I will I will share the exact exact name with you, which has to do with the issue of democracy, with the issue of uh, you know the, the transition to democracy, the consolidation of democracy, and as well as the challenges that democracies in Latin America are facing right now. So these are the two books that I would suggest you, the one by Smith and Green, and formerly by the, the 2019 edition, which is the most recent one. That will give you a, a more historical background. And the other one by Smith uh, will give you a more contemporary approach of the current challenges that we are we are facing. All right. Well, thank you so much, Diego, uh, for your presentation today and providing us this information about the Latin American and Hemisphere Studies Program. Uh, that is the last question that I saw, and it's just about rounding up to finish your time frame for your session. Um, so uh, please feel free to email lasp at gwu.edu, and we provided that contact information if you have any other questions for uh, uh, Dr. Vince Brun uh, or Emily, his program assistant, about the Latin American Hemispheric Studies Program. And once again, thank you so much, Diego, for uh, chatting uh, a little bit more about the degree program and providing this information to our students today. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for participating in this, in this meeting, virtual meeting. And as I said before, uh, feel free to write to uh, Emily also additional admission specific questions to the uh, email that uh, you can see there that Neil Goldstein has shared with you. Uh, also, you, uh, you can write me. And again, keep in mind that uh, we're here to answer any question you have and to help in any way we can. So thank you and have a very good uh, rest of the day. Good afternoon and stay safe.